everyone, Stephanie Dimon from the Dimon Homestead, and today is kind of a first for me. Um, well, kind of and not. So not my first time to make chicken pot pie, but last time we did a taste test at Dan and Lou's, we decided on a competition. Daniel and Lou told us that they were going to be making chicken pot pie for their next recipe, and I was like, oh, please, please. Let me bring one too. So I think we're all now chipping in with a chicken pot pie. Uh, so we can do kind of like a taste test just to see, I don't know, we'll see how it turns out. But I really love my chicken pot pie. Um, I've made it for the family for years. And so we're making chicken pot pie today. Uh, I am taking a little bit of a shortcut though because I have been working and just got home and everything's busy. So instead of roasting a chicken and all that kind of stuff, I'm actually just picking up, I had picked up a um, Italian herbed rotisserie chicken yesterday at the store, stuck it in the fridge, and I'm just gonna debone this chicken and use it for my chicken pot pie. So I'm taking a couple shortcuts this time. Um, not only that, but my other shortcut is, I normally do like a pie crust just a typical pie crust bottom and the top. But this time, I wanna try a puff pastry top and bottom. That is something I've never done before. So I'm gonna try something new this time and do puff pastry. And I am also buying, I did buy a store-bought puff pastry. So we're letting this thaw right here on the counter. Um, we're gonna let this thaw out while we do everything else, but you can find it in your frozen food section, puff pastry along with like the pre-rolled out or pre-rolled um, pie crust as well. It's normally in the same area. So puff pastry, we're gonna try that because I think it's gonna be nice and flaky and golden because we're gonna do an egg wash on it. Uh, so yeah, let's get this started. So step one, I am going to just debone this chicken and I'm gonna get this set aside because we are going to need to first um, get the potatoes and the carrots soft because that's what's going to take the longest other side of cooking your chicken if it's not cooked yet um, cooking the carrots and potatoes getting them soft enough so that whenever they're in the pie and it bakes they're still not hard and crunchy um, for the dish itself so let's get this pulled apart and then we can start cooking the rest. Okay, I have picked that chicken. I used the lid of it um, pretty clean. Got the dark meat and the white meat and a little bit of that fat that settled to the bottom of it. Um, put some of that in there. Now what I need to do is I'm going to get my cast iron pot here. Let me show you. Okay. Got my cast iron pot here. Um, I'm going to add in some chicken broth. If you were to cook your chicken and your potatoes and your carrots together in some water, like boil it, you could probably skip the chicken broth step, but because the potatoes and carrots did not have an opportunity to cook with chicken juices, I want them to absorb that flavor. So I'm going to chick cook them into chicken in chicken broth. And I have my oven going at 400 degrees. I just have it preheated at 400 degrees. Now I'm going to chop up some golden potatoes into bite-sized cube pieces. I am not going to um, take the skin off of these potatoes, these golden potatoes. They have a pretty light skin. They're not too rough. They don't have a hard texture, so I'm going to keep the skin on. Plus, that's where a lot of nutrients are, so the skin. I'm kind of eyeballing it, depending on how many potatoes I think I'm going to want. Um, I 
did about three medium potatoes. That'll be good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the heat. Bring this to a boil. And I'll chop my carrots and add them too. Carrots! And then I'm gonna add to the pot some finely chopped up celery. I'm gonna cut it lengthwise so it's even smaller. Some people don't like celery too much in big chunks. But when it's boiled down, it kind of softens up some and it just gives it a little bit of a different flavor. Okay, so we have our um, celery, carrot, and potato coming to a boil in the chicken broth. To my skillet, I'm going to add half a stick or a quarter cup of butter to the pan and get that going. While that melts, I'm gonna chop up my onion and some garlic. Ah. All right, I've added my onion to my butter and it's starting to melt down. And I'm also gonna add in three chopped, finely chopped cloves of garlic to my onion as well. All right, I'm adding in the garlic pieces now. While this is cooking down and becoming translucent, I wanna go ahead and prepare the bottom of my pot pie dish with a layer of pastry. Um, and I don't want it to get soggy, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to blind bake it, which is just a term of dry baking your pastry before you added any fillings. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the oven here in a second, in a 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. So you're not gonna completely cook it. Um, you just want it um, to where it won't get super soggy. It'll have some sort of firmness to it when everything else is topped on it. If you want for added flavor to your stock, you can add in a chicken bouillon cube. And this is just added chicken flavor. Very concentrated chicken flavor. So you can drop one of those in there and mix it around and it'll dissolve, give everything just a rich chicken flavor. My puff pastry for my pan over here doesn't quite fit, so I'm just rolling it out a little bit. And I wanna make sure that it covers the entire bottom of the pan. That'll do. All right, I got my puff pastry laid out in my pan here and I'm going to prick it with a fork and pop it in the oven. Pricking it with a fork just allows hot air to escape from underneath it so it doesn't become one big giant bubble. Going in for 10 minutes. My potatoes and carrots have come to a full rolling boil, so I'm just going to keep an eye on them. And once they become pretty tender, I will turn down the heat. And it won't take too much longer because the pieces are small. So for now, what we're gonna do is to our onion and garlic and butter pan, to our onion and butter and garlic pan, we're gonna add in a quarter cup of flour. So as much oil as you have, that's how much flour that you wanna add. So we added a quarter cup of oil or a quarter cup of butter. We're going to add a quarter cup of flour and we're gonna mix this in to make a paste and we're gonna cook it down for just a couple minutes. 
you have to continue to stir it um, or else it will burn. All right, so I've got my quarter cup of flour and I'm just gonna sprinkle this all around and then we're gonna start stirring it. This flour uh, mixed in with the butter is going to help uh, thicken the stock and the half and half that we're going to be adding into this mixture here. But we do want to cook it for a few minutes because we kind of want to cook down that floury taste. We want to cook that out and let it absorb the onion and garlic taste. I'll show you what it looks like. Stick a fork some of these potatoes and just see how we're looking. Oh yeah, they're fork tender. I'm gonna turn that heat off. I don't want them to turn to mush. All right, that's cooked down for a little bit. Now I'm going to start slowly pouring some of this um, broth into my mixture to thicken it up. And then we're gonna add everything together, including our spices. Um, put them in the pie and pop it back in the oven and it'll be done in about 30 minutes which is perfect timing because we've got to be down there in about 30 minutes. I'm just going to take some of the broth for now. Stir this around to incorporate. All right, so this next step you can use whole milk, reduced fat milk. I'm going to use half and half because I'm going all in. Uh, you could maybe even use heavy cream if you wanted to. Uh, but I'm just going to add, I don't know, like a half cup. Stir this around. And then at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in my seasonings. I'm gonna add in some thyme, some whole thyme. I really love whole thyme, like this um, thyme in this recipe. I think thyme and chicken just brings out, I don't know, a comforting flavor. My puff pastry is out, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop some holes in it so it can just unpuff itself a little bit. And it'll kind of deflate back down. Now at this point, you can go ahead and add in your chicken. And your vegetables. And I don't want to add in all of my broth to um, whatever's left in here to my thing because I don't want it to thin it down too much. But I'm gonna just ladle out these vegetables here, scoop them into my gravy mix, and then if I need to add in more, I can. If I, if I feel it's too thick, if I want it thinner. I'm gonna add in some pepper. And this is a good make ahead too. So if you just wanna stop at this step and then put this in the fridge um, and do your pies later on another day, you can totally do that. This is a really good uh, spot. Or you can just eat it like this. If you don't wanna, you could thin it out, make it a soup. That would be really good too. But make sure you taste it before you put it in the oven because you wanna make sure you, if you need to add anything, you can do it now. Um, 
Yeah. That is so good. And I actually didn't add any salt yet. Um, because the chicken broth was not low sodium. It was salty and on its own. So I don't really think it needs salt at all. All right, I am going to scoop out the last of these and then I need to get this in the oven. I'll have seconds to spare. Spreading everything on top of the puff pastry that was on the bottom. Then I'm going to add on add my puff pastry to the top. All right. So just going to roll this out. Tuck it. And then we are going to finish it with an egg wash. So I've just got a egg here. Add a little bit of water. Thin it out a little bit. I'm going to trim off some of this so that it doesn't bake unevenly. I'm going to take my little paintbrush and my egg wash. And then all you're going to do is cut a little, a few slits in the top for air to escape and pop it in the oven. All right, this is fresh out of the oven. It is still sizzling away, but man, it looks good. And we are headed to the competition. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, walking up to the competition. I put a lot of work into this. Oh yeah? Pot pie, yeah. <laughs> I bet it's gonna be delicious. I hope so. Yeah. Over it. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. What did Kim say? She's coming oh, now. Oh, you made that? Huh? No, I did. Oh, you made that? No, he made that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that don't look all right. No, she was making a pot pie too. I hope the little girls like this so we can take some home. Well, I didn't win. Uh, I did. I'm just kidding. I think I did win the best crust. Everyone seemed to like the puff pastry crust, but Kim's pie overall, I think, got the most votes, which is fine. Mustard pie. Buddy, Buddy said it had mustard in it. Kim said it didn't. I don't know. It had something tangy in it, something mustard. You weren't a fan? Who did you think was? I'm not going to say it on camera. <laughs> Just kidding. Yours was the best, babe. Aw. He has to say that. I make all the food. Let's go, Laura. I'm just kidding. It was a fun. It was a fun experience. It was a fun time, and everyone's was really good. So maybe we'll do another one again. I don't know. Maybe Daniel won't want to do another one again. I did not grab your shoes. Going to get them. All right. Well, thanks for joining us today, and we will see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.